Haleluya. Haleluya. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Reverend Davidson Okoko. Davidson Okoko. I am a minister of the gospel. And by the grace of God, I believe I have been called to teach. As outlined in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 8 to 11. The Bible says there, the writer of the book of Ephesians, that's Apostle Paul, has stated that when Christ went on high, he gave gifts. I'm not going to, I'm not reading it, you know, Bible, you know, word to word, but he said he gave, and, you know, Christ gave some to be prophets, he started with prophets, apostles, excuse me, then prophets, then evangelists, then teachers and pastors. And elsewhere in the Bible, the same Paul said, God has set some in the church. God. Firstly, apostles. And then he goes to mention prophets. And then he talks about give, you know, government and all the rest. But so I am convinced that I like to teach the word of God. I like to teach. I have a teaching anointing. Amen. If Christ gave gifts to the church, he must have anointed those gifts. He cannot just, you know, throw empty people inside the church and then leave them there to, you know, figure out how to do that. He equips them. And that equipping is called the anointing. I'm not going to waste your time. Let us pray. We want to learn something special today. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for another wonderful day to learn. You know, that which you will sow in our heart this morning, let not the wicked one take that from us. That is our prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have been talking about ministry gifts. Well, I have been teaching about teaching the gifts, the gifts, the same gift I just quoted to you. Uh, today we are going to, you know, delve into the Old Testament to bring us something that is still of relevance to our topic. And I want you to listen attentively. In the Old Testament, we're going to be reading some scriptures this morning. This morning, when I woke up, I woke up from my bed. And then I went to meditate. I went to meditate. I opened up my Bible. And guess where the Lord showed me? It's First Samuel chapter 16. That's where we are going to read. And I began to read this scripture. First of all, the character in this, or one of the characters in this Bible passage is Samuel. And all, all of us know that Samuel is a prophet. So, there is the office of a prophet. Samuel occupied that office. So remember, he said, and he gave some to the apostles, some prophets. So Samuel was a prophet. But let's just have that in, our, in the back of your mind as we begin to read. I'm going to read for us. I want you to listen. First Samuel chapter 16. Amen. First Samuel chapter 16. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, verse 1, How long will thou mourn Saul, mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? So God rejects people. I want you to take note of that. From reigning over Israel, he can reject kings. God rejects kings. Fill thy home with oil and gold. I will send it to Jesse. The Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. That's verse one. Verse two. And Samuel said, How can I go? If so, hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an hypha with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. So the Lord makes way for his people to escape. Amen. Verse 3, and call Jesse to the sacrifice. My son's name is called Jesse. 
And one of the things we talk about him is invite, we use an expression, invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Jesse must come to the sacrifice. Verse 3, and call Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show him, show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. God anoint kings. And Samuel did that with the Lord speak and came to Bethlehem. By the way, I was in Bethlehem in the year 2010. Excuse me, 2016, I was in Jerusalem. I was in Israel and I went to Bethlehem. I saw this beautiful city. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Come as thou peaceably. In other words, Samuel, this visit you are making here today, I hope there is peace. And then in verse 5, and Samuel said, And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons. Hallelujah. What a revelation I have for myself. Jesse and his sons will be sanctified. And call them to the sacrifice. Verse 6. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him now. The prophet was looking at the first son of who? Jesse. Hallelujah. His name is Eliab. And when he saw Eliab come, he says what? Surely this is the, 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 the one that the Lord has chosen. What does that tell us? Prophets do not know everything. Hallelujah. I hear somebody at the background, you know, countering the streets. You mean prophets do not know everything? Yes, prophets. You know, most times when there is no revelation, you don't have to manufacture one. You don't have to hand out pockets of revelation. Revelations that you have to give are revelations that come from God. And that's why we make mistakes. Amen? He says, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, that's why you have to walk with the Lord. Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now, this place tells us that you don't have to be looking, well, let me be honest with you, look about. But don't be fooled by a man's appearance. Don't be fooled by a man's beauty. Don't be fooled by a man's height. Don't be fooled by a man's wealth. Don't be fooled by a man's religiosity. Yeah, those things can, you can fall into those things. You can, you know, most times we, we, we are, what's the word? There is a word easily deceived. I've, I've, I've lost that word. You can be easily deceived. Gullible. Gullibility. I think that's the word. You know, even though you are gullible, somebody takes advantage of your ignorance, your not knowing, your miscalculation. But along the line, the Lord will open your eyes up. Take him. Yes, he's tall. He's beautiful. She's, I mean, she, he is handsome. She's beautiful. He is rich. He's influential. You know, he's, you know, he knows a lot of people. Whenever he passes by, people celebrate him, celebrate, yeah. Good news. But guess what? Don't just stop on that. There is more to that. In fact, many years ago, I, read, I used to read a popular saying. That, you know, they write it on placards and you know, post it everywhere. They said, education plus beauty plus wealth minus Christ is equal to hellfire. That, that thing came alive some months ago. And I was reflecting on it. I said, well, God, why are you showing me this thing again? This thing I used to know from my youth. He said again, education plus beauty plus wealth plus everything minus Christ is equal to hellfire. I'm not saying you're going to go to hell. But I'm trying to say that those things, they matter, but there is something that matters most is knowing the Lord. The Lord said, except, he said, 
What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What shall a man exchange for his own life? Nothing. Amen. Just take note of that. Let's go back to our scriptures. Then Jesse called Abinadab. Abinadab might be the next senior one after Eliab. And made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse said, made Shema to pass by. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Jesse was not the one doing all this. Hallelujah. If a prophet can make mistakes, how much more the one that is not a prophet. Then Jesse made Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord. Not man. The Lord. Not woman. The Lord. Not your pastor. The Lord. Not your bishop. The Lord. Not your principal. The Lord. Not your husband. The Lord, not your wife. The Lord, not your grandparents. Grandparents had not chosen this. You know, when it comes to the things of God, choice comes from God. Hey, Psalm 127 verse 1. I guess I'm talking right. It says, Except the Lord build the house. Except the Lord build the house. The labor inventor builded it. Except the Lord watches over the city. The, the, the weight in bed that keep it weight. You know, the Lord is in the midst. Psalm 127 verse 1. That's what it means. Well. Now, as Samuel said unto Jesse, I'm reading verse 11 and it's likely we're going to be rounding up. I hear all thy children and he said they are remaining to yet the youngest and behold, you keep the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him for we will not sit down till he come. Maybe. Now, we are not knocking at David. So let's go and read a little bit about David. In verse 12, And he sent and brought him in. He brought David. Now, he was rudy, and with child of, beautiful, of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him for he, for this is he. And the Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of the brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. From that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went around. Now, when the Lord anoints people, his spirit comes. You know, the oil. Now look, then Samuel took the horn of oil. Now the oil and anointed him in the midst of his bread. You know, to anoint is to pour. Is to pour. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. The Samuel said, my cup runneth over. Now, David was, the, was later to you know, use that expression in Psalm, I think it's Psalm 23. He says, that anointed my hair with oil. I don't know whether it's this oil that someone anointed him or another oil, but guess what? I know it's another one. He says, that anointed my hair with oil. My cup runs over because the one that Samuel did there may not have run over, but David said, God anoints him. So, if Samuel anointed him, but now he said, God anoints me. So that means anointing is, is not just a one-time experience. Hallelujah. That's fresh anointing. And that's why when you go down again in Psalm 92, Psalm 92 verse 1, he said, my horn, that is anointed as a horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. The Bible talks about fresh oil. The Bible talks about the anointing. The Bible talks about the anointing to rule. The Bible talks about the anointing to teach. Now, this scripture we have just read many years ago. I was in I was in a place called Lagos. Lagos is in a country called Nigeria. Hallelujah. And precisely, I was in a, you know opposite a street called Adetokumo Ademola Street, Victoria Land, Lagos. Precisely, I was facing one thousand and four flats. For most of us that knew Lagos very well, and what was happening. Uh, what was happening was across the other side of the street, there is Uzubambadi Way Avenue. That was that road. I was, you know, driving on that road. Or I was being driven on that road. Across that road, at the other side of there was a there was a meeting going on. It was a Christian gathering. A Christian gathering by the redeemed Christian Church of God. And there was a, an anointed man of God there who was the 
minister. He's, he is Pastor Kale Jaya. I, I, I will never forget that man. Amen. He was there and he ministered unto us. It was a preaching I enjoyed so much. And uh, I'm not going to tell details of what happened in the meeting. But guess what? I left that place. I bought a tape. And that tape was a ministration by another man of God, the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor Enoch Adeboye. Amen. And guess what? I went to my home and I put that tape. You know, in those days, those days are gone where we play cartridges, cassette tape. You just put it in a radio, cut, cassette player, and play. And guess what? The man of God was looking at, he read this, he read this passage. First Samuel chapter 16. Guess what? He entitled it, Samuel is coming. I'm going to stop right here. That was his title for that message. Samuel is coming. And one of the things he said that, what does Samuel is coming mean? Samuel is coming means the gift of prophecy is coming. When a Samuel comes, a David is anointed. Amen. A king reigns and then prophecies begin to operate. All those gifts begin to operate because oil is a type of the spirit. And then when the spirit is upon you, the spirit is upon you, the gift of God begins to manifest. Let me leave us with this. In the book of Acts chapter 13, I think in verse 1, the Bible says there were in the church that was in Antioch, just like the Bible says, when I was meditating on that scripture, the, Bible, the, the Spirit said, there was in the church that was in Antioch. Now, Paul was not saying, he didn't say, in, that, in, 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 a, in a church that was in Antioch. No, he didn't say that. He said, there was in the church. It's still the same church. But Antioch was an outlet. Hallelujah. Corinth was an outlet. Outlet. Amen. Rome was an outlet. Amen. Galatia. Colossae. Was an outlet. Amen. What is the Lord telling us? The church is one. The church, the body of Christ is one. I don't care what country you dwell in and what ministry, what church. It might be XYZ Pentecostal Church or KYW Baptist my church or whatever church you call yourself. The Lord says, we have one church. We have one church. Whatever, you, whatever geographical location you are located, it's still one church. Whatever you call your name, as long as you have that Bible, and as long as you call upon the name of Jesus, as long as you are living a righteous life, it is one church. Now, there is something in that scripture I just read. It said there were certain prophets and teacher. Now, this is one church. Think about this. The church at Corinth. Antioch, excuse me. The Bible says there were certain prophets and teachers. I began to mention a lot of them. I think there were nine of them. I'm not precise. Do we have, do we go to have a look? Let's go to have a look. Acts chapter 13. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, in the church that was in Antioch, the Bible says there were certain prophets and teachers. So, it's likely there is more than one prophet. And it's also likely there is more than one prophet. Now, this is what in mathematics we call permutations and combinations. Let, let, let's, see, let's see their names in verse 6. Excuse me. Let's go back a little bit. Mentioning a lot of them. Barnabas 1, Simeon 2, Lucius of Cyrene 3, Manaen 4, and so 5. Excuse me. There are 5. So I don't want to deceive us. There were 5 of them. Now think about 5 people in the church, and they were either, either prophets, but the scripture said they are prophets and teachers. So if there were five people, probably four of them were prophets. 
One of them was a teacher. Or three of them were prophets. Two of them will be teachers. Or three of them will be prophets. Or one of them, just like that. So you can combine them. Five combination two. There are five people and there are two classes. How do you split them? You can have three prophets, two teachers, two prophets, three teachers, one prophet, four teachers. Now, or you go the other way around. Four prophets, four teachers, one prophet, three teachers, two prophets, two, two teachers, three prophets, one teacher, four prophets. No matter how you combine it, there were more than one prophet. So that's a principle for us in the church. If we come to a place and there are more than one prophet, if you come to a church and there are more than one teacher, that does not make that church any less qualified to be a church. You know, you can go to places and it's like they are struggling for positions. He said that there must be only one prophet in this church. There's only one pastor in this church. There's only one teacher in that church. An example here is that at the church in Antioch, there were five people who are either prophets or teachers. Or whatever class they belong to. But I know for sure that Paul was a prophet. Amen? Because he had revelations. And one of the key characteristics of a prophet is, first of all, he is a teacher and preacher of the word of God. And he has at least three revelation gifts operating his ministry on a consistent basis. Paul was a prophet. He said one time, have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? That is a vision. For you to see Jesus, you must be having revelation gifts. Barnabas, who we were made to believe or learn in the Bible, is a teacher because there were no mention of Barnabas in the Bible as having revelations. Now, the other three, I don't know, they could be teachers, they could be prophets. But let's just stop right there and let us close. Father, thank you for the, the knowledge you have given us. Remember, we have been studying the ministry offices and we're able to look at 1 Samuel chapter 16. We're looking at the story of Samuel how he anointed David, and what, you know, there's so much to learn from there, but suffice it to say that the office of a prophet is an office, it's a glorious office. God puts people in that office. Man does not elevate or install people into offices. God does. Amen? And as we pay attention to all this, and as we listen to our spirit, what the calling God has given us. You know, don't just run out there and say you're a prophet, you're an apostle, you're this, you're that. Let, let God convince you. For somebody like me, I am not a pastor. I don't care how you try. I cannot run out to go and say, I want to come to church and gather people every Sunday. But when God wants me to operate in that position, he will let me know. But that does not mean also that I cannot go and pastor here and there for one week or two weeks. I can, I can stand in the office of a banker. I don't think I am specifically called to be in that office. I want you to take a note of what office God has called you as we continue to study these Bible passages. Amen? Let us pray as we close. Father, in Jesus' name, you remember we prayed, oh Lord, we said there, that this truth you have implanted in our hearts, let not the wicked one Take them away. Let them be permanently impregnated in our hearts. <laughs> the scripture says, bind them upon thy neck in the book of Proverbs. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'll see you some other time as we continue from where we have stopped. My name is Reverend David Sinokoko. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.